Salutations, crew members! Happy Spooktober! Welcome to the third developer update. This update has been focused on polishing the user and moderator experience and refactoring systems to better prepare the game for future mechanics. Perhaps the largest project tackled by the team this update was adding Atmos piping and rebuilding every single map to support proper atmospherics. No more magical endless air vents! Another big overhaul has been made to the lighting and ray casting of the game, giving things a more dramatic flair at low light. To complement the lighting changes, some color and hue alterations have been made to flashlights and lanterns, which can now be toggled on and off, just in time to get your spook on. Thanks to some tireless work at the 11th hour, diseases can now break out aboard the station. Both configurable and triggerable by admins and the event system, these diseases are not yet curable, but cannot kill those afflicted. But the groundwork has been laid for full virologist gameplay. The spriting team has been hard at work overhauling several outdated sprites to improve the visual experience. Yog Station and B Station spriters have also kindly given permission to let us use some of their sprites. Thanks, guys. Shuttles have gained directional thrusters and a reaction control system on their consoles for omnidirectional movement. This feature is predicted to reduce shuttle-based accidents by 10 billion percent. Nano Trazen has found some room in the budget to distribute PDAs to the entire crew of the station. Currently, they don't do very much for the crew besides being a light in dark places. However, they are favored by the more shifty crew members. Coming with PDAs is the Syndicate Telecrystal Uplink. Traders and nuclear operatives can now customize their kits with a diverse selection of weapons and tools to get the job done, no matter what gets in their way. A signature trader item, the EMAG, can now break open door and locker authenticators. In our ongoing efforts to improve audiovisual feedback, each antagonist gets a big flashy alert at the top of their HUD when they spawn, letting them know of their special status. Everyone, please welcome Unity Station's fourth antagonist to the scene, the Fugitive. The Fugitive's goal is very simple, survive to the end of the round without being handcuffed. What makes that so hard? First, they're on the run from space law and the entire station is alerted to their presence a few minutes after their arrival. They have no station access and they spawn in maintenance with a loaded mechanical toolbox. Think of them as the hard mode trader. In the last update, lasers got an overhaul. Now, ballistic weapons have had one. Among other visual and internal changes, shotguns now fire real buckshot. Two new station roles have been added, the paramedic and the psychiatrist. Both are placeholders until their prospective features get worked on, but mess around with them if you feel like it in the meantime. As we mentioned at the beginning, there was a big focus on quality of life improvements and adding little knickknacks to enhance the player experience this update, so let's skim the Cliff Notes version. Admin tools continue to be expanded on to improve the experience for both them and players. They can now job ban, smite, and also respawn players as whatever role they need. The bar has a jukebox! Jam to your favorite Space Station 13 classics while you listen to the detective's dramatic backstory. When you enter a teleporter, whatever you are dragging is taken with you. Tool actions are more dependent on what intent you've selected. One of the issues that this solves is letting you put wrenches down on tables without disassembling them. Rollable dice, tossable coins, and action figures have been added. Play a game within the game! Security brig cells have timers that can auto-unlock cell doors after a set time has elapsed. Microwaves have timers as well. Make sure to set a time and press the green button to get cooking. Player characters can point at things by pressing Shift and the middle mouse button. Lockers can be broken out of by pressing V and waiting a bit. Also, are you tired of clowns stealing your lockers? You can now use a wrench to secure the locker in place. It's been a long time coming. We are really excited to announce that the time of only official Unity Station servers is ending. Community-run servers have taken over with their own admins, rules, and sub-communities. The king is dead. Long live the king. As you might have heard in this video thus far, Unity Station is getting an original soundtrack composed by the sound team. How about we just cut the chatter for a second and just soak in it?
As you can see, this update is huge, but let's take a moment to talk about what else has been keeping us busy that didn't quite qualify, but can be expected to be completed soon. The wizard antagonist is being programmed as we speak and is already in a playable state on our test branch. Spellcrafting takes lots of dedicated study and practice, but we're hurrying along as fast as we can for a first release to the public within the next 30 days. Cross your fingers and start praying to the ad memes. Right now, a large chunk of time from the team is being spent on two separate system refactors that are key to the completion of version 0.5. The first is Health 1.0 which will cover a huge number of systems from surgery to different playable species to drug metabolization and more. Designing a robust enough health framework to integrate all these systems will take time, so sit tight on that stuff. Addressables is the other big refactor underway, with some parts of it already being deployed. It is a new system developed by the Unity engine developers that allows us to split up client data into separate packages, giving us better performance and handling of resources. Once it's fully set up, it will allow Unity Station to support custom mods, maps, jobs, races, sprites, etc. on a per-server basis. In short, support for diverging code bases is on the way. With half of the 0.5 roadmap goals already complete, we are well on our way towards the Steam release in the later half of 2021. Please keep in mind that our rapid progress with development could not have happened without the generous support of our patrons. All funding raised is used to incentivize completion of project goals and lets us source outside developers when help cannot be easily found internally. Thank you to all of our patrons who have contributed past and present. We appreciate it. If you are interested in supporting the project, consider signing up at patreon.com forward slash Unity Station. If you'd like to jump in and play any of our current releases, then visit unitystation.org to find out how. Links are in the description. Thank you for watching.